Hello everyone, I'm Robert Adut from yaymath.org and welcome to the Love Math Challenge. I've always believed that everyone has a math story. Those stories range from very positive all the way down to very negative, sometimes painful, sometimes even traumatic experiences with regards to math learning. But as a culture, as a society, we never talk about this. We never figure out what happened and we never work to make it right. So that's what I wanna do this time. That's what I wanna do with this program. I wanna invite some courageous guests on to talk about their math story and create healing and turn it around to positivity. I wanna give a special thanks to my friends at Carnegie Learning for creating this beautiful studio space for us to do this in. And once again, welcome to the Love Math Challenge. Hi. Hey. Welcome, Trinise. Thank you. I want to introduce, this is Principal Trinice Brown Warrens mm -hmm. here in beautiful, not so sunny Portland, Oregon. Yeah. You are education royalty, not only a principal, you're a principal at my daughter's elementary school. I am. Which means a lot to me personally. So welcome. Welcome. Thanks. For, thank I you appreciate for, thank you me. having me be here. Thanks for being here. So why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Okay. And so what is your math story? I got you. So my name is Trinice Brown Warrens and I am the proud principal at Markham Elementary School. And I'm also a doctoral student at Baylor University. So sick and bears. Mm. My math story. Whew. Math and I did not come together easily. Mm. Um, so I have dyslexia, um, but my mom didn't believe in labels. The only label she really believed in was greatness. So I was going to be great no matter what was stacked against me. Unfortunately, the opposite side of that coin was I didn't get the help I needed. And so the numbers in my brain were mixed up. And so it took me a long time. And that's when frustration sets in. Mm. And so frustration and math don't go together yeah. because then it causes a shutdown to happen. Um, and that's what happened. Um, I literally shut down. And so I saw math as a necessity to graduate, not as not a necessity for living life to its, its fullest. Right. Um, I did go to school for half a degree in accounting. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's what so, I thought I was going to be. So despite the despite that, I don't know why I decided to continue to do that. Was that like, did your mom have anything to do with that, about the greatness thing? Yeah. So the greatness is my mom, right? Yeah. But um, she wanted to be an accountant and a lawyer when she was younger. Wow. Then she had me at 17 and all of her life dreams went down the drain. Okay. So I thought it was up to me to make her dreams come true. And so I was destined to go to school to be an accountant. Wow. The only problem with that is that the numbers were backwards, right? Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't until I got to the Netherlands. So I studied in the Netherlands and I was sitting in class and all I heard was Charlie Brown. It was just womp, 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 womp. Yeah. And I was like, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah. Um, and then I couldn't see myself sitting behind a desk. So it was less about the math and more about is this a dream that I want to continue to pursue for myself? And so I ended up switching my degree. Uh, to psychology and landed up in education. Wow, what a yeah. track. Yeah. That's that because that was heavy lies the crown yeah. of the family legacy, you know, and you that wore it. it for so long. Were you diagnosed with dyslexia? Was it actually something? No. So you knew you I had just it? like now that I'm in education and I'm seeing all the diagnoses from different students and I'm seeing the same struggles that they had yeah. um, that they're having now is something similar to me. And plus, I know that everything was backwards in my head. I don't need someone to tell me it, yeah. um, but it was definitely something I had to persevere through. Um, and now that I'm on the other side and there's amazing tools and I've had some right. amazing educators, um, you know, math is a little bit better. So. Why do you think, do you often talk about this story? And do you, why do you think people don't talk about their math story, their history with math and those experiences to try to uncover what it is that happened to us, what it is mm -hmm. that happened to you, mm -hmm. and try to turn it around and create a different narrative, different trajectory? Why do you think we don't talk about this in our culture? Because uh, it's embarrassing. Mm. Um, and yeah. math has always, from my perspective, been a subject to tear people down. So it's not like the math teacher leaned in and said, let me help. It was, that's not right. And for a long time, math has always been about one way to solve it. So if you didn't fit in the box of how to solve that problem, then you weren't 
um, uplifted and you weren't seen as great. But now as we're starting to see math expand and adding student discourse to math and saying there's multiple different ways to solve it, I think we'll start to see a different narrative when people talk yeah. about their math stories. And then also, if math isn't applicable in your life, it's just a sting that you suppress. Yeah, it's a suppression, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that there is a, a big darkness that we have to transform to light. Like yes. we're, we're, we're having all these tools, inspired educators that, mm -hmm. that know how to work with people with different right. diagnoses and abilities. Right. But yeah, we don't really uncover what it is. Mm -hmm. And then people just kind of carry that bag Correct. for so long. And I just, I give you a lot of credit for, for talking about that, you know, and I hope other people gain inspiration from your story. Hopefully, and, and, I mean, you know, I inspire kids every day when yeah. I walk in and I see that they're frustrated. It's yeah. one of those things where it's like, okay, I remember how this felt. And so how can I put systems in place to ensure that they can thrive? And yeah. I have amazing educators and we have a really good curriculum that we're using that's shifting the narrative from the educator doing all of the talking and learning right. to kids. So yeah. this I Ready curriculum definitely expands students being able to take ownership of their learning and see how math can come to life from many different perspectives and angles. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Let's say you were to go back in time. Okay. All right. And there's Trinice. At, when was this starting to happen? Like eight years old? Before? I, I can't nine? remember. I just Let's know. say elementary. I know geometry took me out. It took me twice to pass. Okay, it. well, maybe talk about that. We'll, yeah. yeah, well, like maybe look at that a little with you today. Okay. But let's say it was, let's say it was element, because you're, you know, now principal at an elementary mm -hmm. school. Let's say you go back in time and it was Trinice at elementary school okay. years. And you can magically kind of whisper in your mom's ear or the teachers around a little bit of a script of what you wish they would say to you, the child you, <laughs> what would that, what would that message be like to kind of get to that kid and, and maybe start a different trajectory? What, what would those messages be? It doesn't have to be perfect, but just like, what are the fundamentals of what that message would be if you yeah. could go back? I think I don't have to go back because this is what I do every day. So right. I do talk to the little girl in me oh when God. I walk into the classrooms. And what I would tell them is math is a subject that can be conquered with practice yeah. and it's going to look different. And that's OK. Just normalizing the experience of how difficult it is and normalizing the experience of your brain. All brains work a little differently and helping the younger me and every other kid in my building to understand how their brain works so that they can use that capacity to do great things in the classroom. You're right. You're, yeah, you're speaking the language, normalizing the differential yeah. learning systems, honoring the student where they are. Mm -hmm. Like this is the language that we need to be speaking. And right. with your experiences, you have so much authority to talk about that. Yeah. And so I heard you say geometry. Oh. <laughs> so I thought it'd be, I, I kind of cherry on top okay. now that you, you what I think you did is very challenging. Maybe yeah. not for you, but for a lot of people to have the courage to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could show you a few things. You mm -hmm. mentioned something about area before. Yeah. We just talk a little bit about area. Okay, we can on, try. On an invitational basis. <laughs> <laughs> on an invitational basis. Okay. And all you got to do is your best. And if you don't get it, just let me know. And if you do, then that's cool. And maybe just show you what is possible. All okay, right. let's do it. Do you accept the love math challenge? Oh, I accept the love math challenge. Let's do it. All right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the measurement of, let's say, a line or okay. if we were to draw something, this could be in inches and we could call it 10 inches. That makes sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But if we we're going to measure not a line, but like space, Okay. we could think of a rectangular space. Let's call that four inches. Right. So if you're measuring along here, that's 10. Mm -hmm. if you measure along here, that's four inches. Okay. You want to close that rectangle for us? Get I your you. get your marker warm. So yeah. We have four. Yeah. Right. And then, and then we'll close it here. Close it here. Right. And that's Three. also 10. 10. So the question is, what is the area? What is the amount of space in there? Mm. Now, do you happen to know what it is? No. It's okay. No. Okay. Perfect. Okay. We found the <laughs> no right clue. thing. Okay, we found the right thing. <laughs> so what's interesting about area, what took me a long time to wrap my head around when I was learning this, is that area is not just measured in a singular inch. It's measured in a box, a one by one by one, like one all around box. Mm -hmm. You picture a little box that's one all the way around. Mm -hmm. 
So the question is, how many of those boxes would exist in here? And okay. that's the answer to the problem. So let's think about it, right? If this was four, let's say one, two, three, four, I can cut this. Do you agree that would be a two and two there? Mm -hmm. And then if it's four, so we should go one, 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 so it adds up. So there we have, there's your four, like this is one. Let's pop a different color in, because we love the colors. One and one inch, one inch, just to prove that point. One inch and one inch, does that make yep. sense? Uh-huh. Okay, and then so we could do the same with the 10, right? Mm -hmm. How many of these, like uh, basically cuts am I gonna do if this is down here in 10 inches? 10. Right on. I was going to tee you up, set you up for success, knowing that this is four, so it's going to be 10 over there. You want to do something with me? All right, I got you. Let's go. Here we got one. One. Two. This is an art form, too. Three. We have undo if you need. Oh, four. four. This is great. Five, six, six seven, seven, eight, nine, nine. ten. Oh. Okay, so you it's got the beautiful ten. Beautiful art. It is beautiful art. Now, I'm going to leave it to you. Do you want to try again to make it even, or do you want to leave it and say, let's roll? Because let's roll with it. This is math. It. Math sometimes looks okay. messy, doesn't right. it? And that's kind of, I'm glad you chose that. I wasn't, I didn't have any intention one way or the other, but it proves that perfection is not the goal, mm -hmm. right? So all of these are one all the way around. So like these are one, let's say for example here. So do you agree this box is that one all the way around box? Okay, yes. Okay. How many are there? That's the answer to the question. 40. Okay. So congratulations on starting to do area. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't help but laugh. So the answer is 40. Mm -hmm. um, how would we get that without drawing all the boxes? Um, could I take 10 inches times 4 inches, which would give me 40? You can, and that's exactly what you do do. Okay. So rock, rock and roll. That is the formula for the area of a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Often some people call that the base mm -hmm. times the height. The base times the height. So I'm gonna just put that here so it kind of pops for you. The area equals the base times the height. That dot means times. Mm -hmm. And the base is 10 inches, fair? Yep. And the height is four, four. inches. And like you said, 10 times four is 40. Now here's the little kicker that always confuses a lot of students, mm -hmm. and it's perfect that you're here. Area is not in inches, because inches is just a line. It's not a space. Okay. So like with real estate, for example, we talk about, oh, this has a 2,000 square feet. That is a foot by a foot by a foot, a foot all the way around, like the remember little box? Mm -hmm. This box. Yeah, and instead of inches, it's a one all the way around square box that's one foot. Mm -hmm. It's like, how many of those can you walk around? And Got that's it. the measurement of a room. Okay. So inch by inch or inch times inch. What is an inch technically times an inch? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a technical term for this and it's called squared. Have you heard of this ter term before? Mm -hmm. Squared means something times itself. Okay. So this means the inch boxes. It's a space box. So you have 40 of them. Got it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just like square feet. Square feet would be a one by one by one. This is one square foot. Does that make sense? It's yes. literally a square. Got it. Rock and roll. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an area problem. Okay? Okay. You ready? Yep. All right, mm -hmm. one area problem, give it up. Ooh, we got toys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what's the base? Make it up. Uh, let's keep it easy. Sure. Uh, let's go with 15. And let's let's do a different units instead of inches. Anything you want, it doesn't I'm matter. Let's do feet. Let's go, 15 feet. That is the base, let's say. What's that? Say two. Two feet. All right, could you kindly tell us what the area of this is and try to do your best with the units? Right there. Okay, so if I am looking at 15 feet as the base, yeah. so then area. Oh, sorry, I didn't get your color. Okay, go ahead. Area equals base times height. Oh, go in formula. Of course, you got to use the formula, right? <laughs> so then sure. this would equal 15 times 2. Yep. Which would equal area yeah. equals 30 feet 
squared. Rock and roll. Yeah. And so often students say feet squared, but like real estate, how would you say that? Square feet? Yeah, that's the answer. Congrats. Oh, I did it. You did. Okay, cool. You did. That's awesome. That was and it. Can I do one more for you for that's, fun? I made this thing harder than it needed to be. You didn't make it. It became that Ooh. way. That's the story. Mm. And we are changing that energy. I got yeah. you. What shape do you see now? This is the last one. Oh, a triangle. Triangle. <laughs> The total area. I love that energy, by the way. It's very yeah. authentic. Love it. Can I put a big old 30 in the middle? Because you already said this area is 30. Okay. Okay. I dropped the square feet just to make it simple. Okay. What place is the area of this triangle in that one? If the total rectangle is, is 30. Is it 15? It is 15. Here, let's pick a different color for fun. So that's a 15. And that's a 15. Does that make sense? Just as mm -hmm. a sketch. So it turns out that the area of a triangle is also the base times the height. But what do we do with the 30? What did you do to 30 to get 15? I divided it by two. You divided it by two, <laughs> divided by two. So congratulations, you now know the area of triangle. Okay. That wasn't that bad. I'm glad. Well, that's all I wanted to do with you. I, I wanted to hear from you, wanted to show you some things. Oh, I appreciate that. So I want to just thank you for Thanks. being here. And what, I appreciate a, what a great it. moment. I'm always going to remember this. This was fun. Yeah. Oh, who knew math could be fun? I, I, I'll take this. Yeah. You want to say yay math? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> yay, yay math? Yay I math? got you. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Yay, yay math! math! All right.